Throughout NBA history, there have been those teams that turn the league into a living nightmare for everyone else. Nine point lead for the Spurs. Tim Duncan, a little pick and roll. David Robinson, how about a one-hander? Spurs! In the 60s, it was the Bill Russell-led Celtics who set the standard. By the 80s, Magic and Bird took over. We all know who owned the 90s, but as soon as that era ended, the league faced a new challenge, the most unstoppable one-two punch it had ever seen. Left, the Lakers have two. Bryant, to shot! Then came the modern NBA, and with it, the arrival of LeBron James. A one-man wrecking crew, he crushed teams and shattered dreams in his relentless pursuit of greatness. But just as he was wreaking havoc across the league, something even more devastating emerged. Couple, you better look out. That guy is hot. Curry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Appropriate. For NBA history, you got it! And the dream season is now complete. The Golden State Warriors are the 2015 NBA champions. The Golden State Warriors burst onto the scene and set the league ablaze. If LeBron James is the boogeyman, then the Warriors captain, the tormentor of France himself, Steph Curry, is the one the NBA summoned to take down the boogeyman. When KD teamed up with the Warriors in 2016, the nightmare reached its peak. Players across the league were left absolutely sick to their stomachs. Like, it still don't make no sense. It doesn't justify anything. And y'all won a lot of championship, but it was lame as Luckily for the league, a series of unexpected events brought an end to the nightmare, allowing everyone to finally wake up. But just as they thought it was over, it resurfaced again in 2022. Six assists for Green. Curry along three. That's good! Steph Curry from way downtown! Then, just like in 2019, a series of events happened that unfortunately put a lid to this nightmare. At last, it was over. Players and teams could finally step back onto the court and set the stage for a new era. At least, that's the story they were telling themselves. They're playing team. They're playing team. But unfortunately for them, even today, in 2025, the nightmare is far from over. Stop by Moody. Kobe Jones, yeah. Take it with the shot blocker. Yeah, for good reason. Uh, year three, just gets better and better. Moody faked the pass and buried the jumper. Waters has it. Pat Spencer, nice two-man game. Spencer. Based on the latest weather forecast, a new storm is brewing for the NBA and its winds are gaining strength. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves. There is that Curry. So Steph, Come on, Jimmy, shake so Steph gave Come him. On, Steph. Gave him. <laughs> Whenever I post a Warriors video, the comments come pouring in, calling me delusional, glazing, over and over and over and over again. It's a never-ending cycle. And when I say never-ending, I mean, just look. Look at these. <laughs> Honestly, these comments crack me up. They really make my day. In fact, whenever I see them, I gather the whole family and we celebrate like I just got drafted into the NBA. <laughs> it's a blessing, a gift, a joy. Keep them coming, please. But here's the cold, hard truth. Just like I called it in 2022 and made you all apologize, the 2025 Warriors are headed straight back to the NBA Finals, and once again, Steph Curry is going to look Jason Tatum in the eye and say, who's your daddy? I know some of you are going to say, but you called it in 2023 and 2024, and the Warriors didn't win. But come on, let's be real. In 2023, Draymond literally jinxed me when he signed a contract with Dana White and sent Jordan Poole to the Shadow Realm. And if that wasn't enough, the Lakers practically hired the Mafia in that postseason, pulling off the greatest basketball hit job I've seen in a long time. See the Lakers back off the both and Mooney. Oh, 
post-trade deadline when they remade their roster with minimal fouls and... Then in 2024, Draymond jinxed me again, guys. The Warriors were easily on track to make the playoffs and go deep, deep, deep if it weren't for Draymond trying to lock Rudy Gobert in a guillotine submission and delivering a spinning backfist KO on Yusef Nurkic. So, as you can clearly see, I was jinxed. But, 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 2025 won't be like that. No, no, no. There aren't any curses or jinxes on the horizon. I watched Draymond play the other day, and the guy looks fired up like he's put the gloves down for good and picked up the basketball again. But so far, the numbers are extremely similar. He gets the opportunities. Who knows? Could be a career year. I mean, seriously, what was this? Look at that, guys. Draymond pulling off a between-the-legs move into a mid-range floater? Sheesh, that's something else. And on top of that, the Warriors have been stacking up win after win in the preseason. Now, I get it, the preseason doesn't count for regular season standings, but still, take a look at this. Just a few days ago, the Warriors won their fifth game in the preseason, marking the fourth time in the past decade they've accomplished this feat. If you're wondering what the other three years were, here they are, 2015, 2017, and 2022. Do you know what all those years have in common? Here's a hint, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook and James Harden will be remembered as some of the greatest players the league has ever seen, but have never won this one thing. A ring. Every single time the Warriors have won five games in the preseason over the past decade, they've ended up winning a ring. But to top it all off, after winning those five games this year, the Warriors didn't just sit back and say, that's enough. No, no, no. They capped it off by handing the Los Angeles Lakers a beatdown they won't forget for the rest of the season. Oh, great anticipation. And Beekman throws it down. Reese Beekman. This is just one of the reasons why I'm convinced the Warriors are heading straight back to the NBA Finals. Here's my second reason, which should leave no doubt that the Warriors are on their way back to the promised land. Just look at the current Western Conference landscape. Let's break this down quickly. Starting at the top of the list, we've got the Memphis Grizzlies. First, let's talk about this team. Without John ja Morant, they're nowhere. We saw it last season. And as I've been saying for years, Ja is injury prone. Just look at the preseason. He already had a close call. But it's not just about the injuries. I can see them going on a hot streak, maybe winning 10 straight, only for Ja to get overconfident and bring out the bang bangs again. And then, just like that, boom, he's out of the league once more. Next up, we have the Denver Nuggets. Now, they're no pushovers. With Nikola Jokic, they've always been a threat, but the reality is, without Jamal Murray playing at his peak, the Nuggets are beatable just like when the Warriors ran through them in 2022. And based on what we've seen from Murray over the past year, whether it's last season's playoffs or the Olympics, he hasn't quite looked like his old self. Because of that, I don't see the Nuggets standing in the way of the 2025 Warriors. Next up are the Dallas Mavericks. To be honest, I think the Mavericks have taken a step back compared to last season. They lost Derek Jones Jr., who was a key part of their identity. And yes, they added Clay, who's still one of my favorite players, but let's face it, he's 35 now. After going 0 for 10 in that game against the Kings and looking off during this season's preseason, he's clearly not the same old Clay. On top of that, as we saw last season, the Mavericks just don't have what it takes to topple a well oiled juggernaut with the way Luka plays. And this season, the Warriors look like they're exactly that a well oiled juggernaut. After the Mavericks are the New Orleans Pelicans. And when it comes to this team, does anyone actually believe Zion will be healthy enough come playoff time? I mean, he's missed the first five playoffs of his career due to injury, and I'm going to bet this year is going to make it six years straight. And without Zion, let's be honest, even with the addition of DeJounte Murray, the team really isn't a contender. 
Then there's the Timberwolves. I believe Antman is destined for greatness and will be in the MVP conversation, but any championship hopes they had went out the window when they traded away Carl Anthony Towns. As an all-star stretch five, he was a huge asset for them last season. And while he might not have had the killer instinct to be the go-to guy, he was a crucial piece alongside Edwards. Without him, I just don't see them being able to stand up to the Warriors. Next up are the OKC Thunder. Yes, they took the regular season series against the Warriors last year 3-1, but let's be honest, two of those wins came down to miracle shots. Without those, it could have easily been 1-3 the other way around. And let's not forget, the Warriors are much stronger this season. There's no way OKC is taking down the 2025 Warriors in a best of seven series. Next up are the Los Angeles Lakers. And honestly, without the referees giving them a massive free throw advantage, a well-documented trend, this team is a circus. I mean, they've got Bronny James, LeBron's son on the roster, and let's face it, he doesn't look NBA ready. On top of that, their head coach was a podcaster not too long ago. With this setup, I don't see the Lakers going far. I mean, they've got smacked by the Warriors twice in the preseason. Next up are the Los Angeles Clippers, and man, this team has been utterly destroyed by Kawhi Leonard. Like, the season hasn't even started yet, and he's already out indefinitely. And beyond Kawhi, they're relying on a 35-year-old James Harden to shoulder the burden? The Clippers aren't going to be a threat to the Warriors. And the Phoenix Suns? Nah, they're a my turn, your turn kind of team. Sure, they're dangerous, but like the Mavericks, that style won't cut it against a well-oiled juggernaut. As for the Trailblazers, my main concern is Scoot Henderson's development. The Kings, their biggest achievement in the last decade was beating the Warriors in a play-in game. The Spurs, Wambanyama, isn't ready yet. And then we've got the Jazz and the Rockets. If anyone thinks these two are going to stop the Warriors, well, come on. As you can see, the West is wide open for the Warriors in 2025, making their path to the finals look like a cakewalk. And when they get there, Steph Curry will be ready to ask Jason Tatum, or even Jalen Brunson, once again, who's your daddy? <laughs> Wondering why I didn't mention the 76ers or the Milwaukee Bucks? Well, it's simple. The 76ers' top two players are notoriously injury-prone, and one strong gust of wind will send their season crashing down. As for the Milwaukee Bucks, any hope of a dynasty vanished the moment they fired Mike Budenholzer and traded away the league's best two-way guard, Drew Holiday. But anyway, let's get back to the 2025 Warriors and the third reason I know they're winning the 2025 NBA championship. On top of looking like champions in the preseason with a 6-0 record and with the West being wide open, I have to say, this team is as deep as the Pacific Ocean. I mean, we all know what Steph Curry and Draymond bring to the table, but just take a look at the rest of this roster. Andrew Wiggins is playing with the same fire we saw in 2022. Jonathan Kaminga is motivated and hungry playing for a contract. Trace Jackson Davis looks NBA ready. GP2 is healthy, Kavon Looney seems rejuvenated, and DeAnthony Melton is shaping up to be a huge asset. But he healed? It's like he stole Clay's shooting touch. Brandon Pazimski looks like he's ready to take a charge from a truck. And let's not forget Slow Mo, Kyle Anderson, out there making smart plays. Then there's Quinton Post, a stretch five, 24 years old, seven footer who averaged 17 and eight in college last year. Mr. Buzzer Beater himself, Lindsey Waters III. And I haven't even mentioned Moses Moody yet. That's 14 players I just listed. 14 deep, guys. 14 deep. This team is stacked with more weapons than any other in the league. Honestly, the Warriors' second unit could probably take down teams like Detroit. And beyond the talent, the squad looks fully bought in. The egos are gone, the drama's over, and everyone is following Steph Curry's lead. The same Steph who saved Team USA in the Olympics. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting serious 2022 vibes from this team. Are you all seeing what I'm seeing?
But anyway, guys, on another note, I'm not typically a WNBA fan. I'm a diehard Warriors Glazer, as you all repeatedly tell me. <laughs> but there's this one player in the WNBA, Caitlin Clark, who's been pulling off some unbelievable feats that no man has ever accomplished. In fact, there was one game where she did something that had never been done before in either men's or women's college basketball. It was such an extraordinary performance that it's now considered one of the greatest single game achievements in NCAA history. If you're curious about what happened in that game and what made it so legendary, make sure to check out this video where I've painstakingly documented the entire thing. 